Hey, how are you today? This is Josh Patrick, and you're at Cracking the Cash Flow Code. And today, my guest is Stephen J. Anderson. And I like the J after asking what that means, but <laughs> we may get there, we may not. Stephen is the author of a new book, The Bicycle Book. And if you Google it, uh, you're going to have to put his name behind it because there's about 10,000 bicycle books. That's right. Um, and the thing I like about the book is it's a business parable. And if you know about my books, you know I'm a big fan of business parables because that's what I write. So let's bring Stephen on and we'll start around the 12 lessons that are in the bicycle book and see what we can learn today. Hey, Stephen, how are you today? I am great, Josh. Thanks for having me and uh, good to be with you. I am. Um... The, uh, the whole backstory on this, the, the bicycle book is what we call an autobiographical business novel. So this is, a, uh, this is a new genre of literature. And basically what it is, is uh, there's a lot of factual information here with true people that existed, principles, uh, with some scenarios that we've created based on principles that were present. So I'll give you a little bit of the backstory. I went to business school when I was 12 years old. <laughs> and, and that business school experience, Josh, was on a 1960s purple Schwinn Stingray bicycle. You remember the one with the big Texas Longhorn handlebars? Uh, anybody that was a kid in that area in the 60s, 70s had one. It was the most popular bike in America at the time, which is a whole other story. And we had some non-negotiables uh, at our house growing up. Uh, and, and one of those, my, my dad was the CEO of the largest ad agency in the Western United States. And we had a pretty consistent routine. We had some non-negotiables, piano was a non-negotiable. Everybody played the piano. Scouting, uh, all the boys had to earn their eagle before they could get their driver's license. And we all had to have a paper route. So at age 12, the paper route was just something that you did. And the reason was because then, back then, for those that may not remember back that far, paper news was delivered on newsprint by young guys on bicycles <laughs> that would throw it on your porch every day. And that was the source of news in addition to radio and TV, but that's how we got our print news. And unlike today where everything is automated, the entire business rested on the shoulders of this 12 year old kid. I had to collect all the money. I had to settle up with the route supervisor. I had to keep all the customers happy. It was one of the greatest business experiences I've ever had. Now, the backdrop for all of that was dinner table conversations almost every night about customer service and how to run a profitable business at the hands of CEO dad. He turned every dinner table conversation into a seminar, into a training session. And as I've looked back, Josh, I have used those lessons that he taught over and over and over in all the businesses that I've created over the years. And so what the objective was, is I wanted to share the story and the 12 lessons that he taught that are all about running a successful, profitable business with happy paying customers that repeat and refer uh, and that will allow you to grow your business. So it's an engaging story and has very hard hitting strategies in it to apply in any business to be successful. So let's go through some of those 12 principles. Give Got me a it. couple of them. So here's one of the most meaningful. Uh, one of the, the backstory is he created a slogan for one of the biggest banks in the country. And it was a, it was a, advertising slogan, and it was the name of the bank, where people mean everything. So that was their customer service promise, is that people are the center of our business, not the money, uh, but the people. And they used that slogan, Josh, for over 30 years to promote their bank. And he, he was the one who coined it. And so uh, when we first, I, I, so I watched how they as an organization rolled this out, how they executed. And there was one particular experience when I walked in one of the bank branches as a 12-year-old business owner. 
And I had a stack of checks because I had collected from all my customers. I had a stack of checks. I walked in and in my mind, Josh, I'm a business owner. I'm successful. I'm running my own show, the whole deal. That's what I saw in my own, my mind's eye. What the bank teller saw was a 12 year old kid with a, a puffy coat on with smudged uh, newsprint all over his face. I did not look very presentable. And she treated me like a 12 year old. Imagine that. It was less than a where people mean everything experience. And I was ticked. And I went home that night and around the dinner table, uh, I shared my experience. And basically what I told my dad is I went to the bank today where people mean everything and I got treated like less than a people. And I was, I have never forgotten that negative customer experience. And I think you would agree. You could probably tell me dozens of negative customer experiences you've had. You've never forgotten them. And that night, this is what he said to me. And I'll quote, he said, you know, if that's the customer experience, the one that I had, they might be better off without the slogan. Sometimes no marketing, no advertising, no promotion is better than the most creative high impact campaign. Sometimes doing nothing is better. And then he went on. Yeah, to I, I, need, I need to stop you here, though, just because um, there's some other messages there that I think that we need to consider. Perfect. And the, and the first one is, and this is a big deal because I'm a huge fan of values-led companies. There's a challenge with being a values-led company. There is. And that is you have to tell the truth. Yep. So if you say people mean everything and you don't always get there, you say, if we're not there, this is what you need to help us fix it. And people will help you fix it if you're honest and transparent. Absolutely. What happened here and happens so much in business is you see the, especially in big organizations, you have the values on the wall and nobody is paying attention to it. And that's what you had. You had a value on the wall yep. and the company wasn't walking their talk and they were probably losing more customers and gaining more customers. So my sort of way I look at that is they shouldn't put that to the side. They should learn how to live it if that's what they think is important. A hundred percent. Yep. And so that, that was his whole, um, and so let me finish what he said. He said, when the experience falls short and a business does not live up to its words and the image it project, projects, the damage can be more serious than any amount of advertising can repair. And so his message to me was, yeah, it's you got to get it dialed in on the outside to be able to project it to the outside. Right. It's got to, it's an internal job first, which yes. is common sense, but uncommonly practiced. And so the whole one of the big missions of the bicycle book is to get it dialed in on the inside so that you have something you can promote or that your customers will promote it for you um, on the outside. That's that's the whole mission. And so that was one of the real key principles. Now, let's talk about falling short, Josh, just like you've, you've just mentioned. That is another one of the 12 secrets is not just satisfying a customer when things go wrong, but creating what he called a great recovery. So here is the, the example. I got pretty good. I got pretty good at tossing papers. So good that I never had to stop. So I could, I could literally ride down the sidewalk, toss the paper, and it would land right in the middle of the front porch. I got good. And I got cocky. So there was one particular customer that was challenging because they had remodeled their front porch and enclosed it. So the, the, the step was only about eight inches that I had to hit. It was not a big strike zone. And I got a little overconfident one day, threw it a little too hard, and it went through the side panel glass pane next to the door. I shattered 
the window. So I'm terrified of what's going to happen. What are the consequences? My first reaction, I wanted to bolt. <laughs> I just wanted to get out of there, which is typically what we want to do when things go wrong. Nobody wants to confront an upset customer, right? So I had the presence of mind to stop. I knocked on the door. Very nice lady came out. She immediately saw what had happened. And, you know, I told her I'll fix it. I'll pay for the repair, the whole deal. And she was very gracious, right? Problem solved. That night at dinner, the lesson that I learned was the principle of a great recovery. And that sometimes situations like that are the biggest opportunity to create not just a satisfied customer, but a loyal one. And he yeah. mapped out for me the strategy for a great recovery, not just a satisfactory one, but a great one that caused great word of mouth and created a loyal customer. So when you do that, and I've had that happen a couple of times in my life where someone I bought something from has fixed a problem that was would have lost their business forever from me had they not. And they went way above that. What they've done is they've created a raving customer. Correct. And that's what we want to do. And, the, and the, here's the, the secret about raving customers. They're almost never created when everything goes right. That's exactly right. They generally are created when you fix a problem for them in a manner that is something they didn't expect where you went over and above. 100%. So that's a really that's a that's a really good lesson to learn, and it's one that most business owners never never learn, unfortunately. Well, and so beyond the principle, too, Josh is the strategy. So what he mapped out for me is not just the principle. Yeah, go beyond what they expect, but exactly how to do it. Yes. Um, so that every time when it happens, the entire team, everybody on the team, knows how to execute a great recovery. It's not just lip service, but here's step one, step two, step three, how to execute it. So you, you get a, a loyal customer. And as you know, there is a big difference between satisfaction and loyalty. So here's one of the things that I learned the hard way <laughs> is that spending time in your business doing scenario planning about the four or five major things that could go wrong and cause you really big problems in your life. If you've done some scenario planning, you don't have to sit there and scratch your head about what to do next. You know what to do next because you already gamed it out. 100%. Uh, we do in, uh, in our business, we do some work in healthcare. And one of the best examples I know of that is in surgery centers, they actually do drills for uh, what to do when things don't go as planned. So they actually run the scenario. It's like a fire drill and they, they run it with the entire team and they have a procedure that they follow to what to do in different scenarios. Exactly like you're saying is it's, it's one thing to talk about it, but it's another thing to actually simulate it, prep it so everybody knows what to do and can execute it in the moment. Yeah, there's another great book that talks about that really well. Um, a, a surgeon in Boston named Atul Gawande mm -hmm. has written a book called The Checklist Manifesto. Yes. He, and he does a brilliant job of talking about how good medical systems make sure they don't screw up surgeries. Yep. And, and, and it's an issue. It is a big issue. Oh, it's a huge issue. It happens way more than we think and way more than we want. So um, unfortunately, you know what they call the doctor who graduates to the bottom of the medical class? Doctor. Right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. He gets the same professional designation as the guy who graduated top of his class. Right. He's a full fellow and spent 18 years on top of medical school learning their craft. Exactly. <laughs> so... So there's, I mean, Josh, there's, I mean, there are so many, so many pieces to this whole puzzle. Let me share with you one, just one more bicycle book, Principle of the Twelve. Um, I, I had the opportunity early in my career, this is post paper route, 
to spend the last week of Dr. W. Edwards Deming's life with him. And you know who Deming is. Oh, he's, one of my, he's one of my heroes, by the way. And uh, we, we didn't know it at the time, uh, but he was 93, passed away the week after I was with him. And we got to spend an entire week together. It changed my business life. Uh, sitting at the feet of a man who literally changed the world. I mean, his principles that he uh, initially taught in Japan to rebuild their economy. And then later, uh, late in his career from age 80 to age 93, he brought to the United States to teach, teach us how to compete with the Japanese. Actually, he started in the United States in World War II. Correct. Was really successful. After World War II, nobody listened to him. Then he went to Japan, and Japan won his knowledge, and we lost it. We were yeah. Idiots. In fact, to this day, the most coveted prize in the Japanese business community is the Deming Prize. They yes. still it to this day. Yeah. And one of the things that he impressed upon me there were a lot of things, but the principle of continual improvement, yeah. never ending continual improvement, and the process around that, and the principle that he said 94% of success is in the system. And he's right about that. And, and so when you combine those two principles together, what is the system for continual improvement? And that, of course, uh, he introduced, you know, the whole, the whole feedback loop, the never ending feedback loop of, you know, you launch something, you get customer feedback, then you incorporate that into the process and you, that is a never ending process. So really the question is, what's the feedback that you incorporate? Because there is specific feedback and there's general feedback. Let me explain that real quick. So there are suggestions that I got initially in my first business as a paper boy. I got specific suggestions and requests from my customers that were specific for them. I had a customer who had had some had an accident, had some surgery, was not ambulatory, and so made a request to, you know, if I could deliver the paper to a specific spot. So that was an accommodation for that particular customer. Uh, I also had a customer who was one of my dad's army buddies. My dad served in World War II, and uh, one of my customers was one of his army buddies who was amazing at giving me general feedback of how to improve the overall service for all of my customers, not just him. And so this later on in my career, when I met Deming, he added on to that principle of how you differentiate between specific problems and general problems. And that's one of the, the service strategies that we talk about in the bicycle book is how do you separate the different types of feedback so you get good feedback that can be incorporated into the whole feedback loop to improve your product or service on a never ending basis. But all feedback is not the same. Yes, and that's true. And another thing with Deming's work, which is really important, is measurement. 100%. You have to measurement and you have to get your process in, with what he would, he would call in control, yep. which meant it had to be within two or three standard deviations. And for those listening, you don't know what that is. That's statistical stuff. Go out and take yourself a statistics one course. That's all you're going to need. You don't have to be any more complicated than that. And then read Deming's 14 points and apply it. And by the way, all, I mean, literally all the process improvement programs all flow out of Deming's 14 points. Lean flows out of it, Six Sigma flows out of it, the theory of constraints throw, flows out of it, and so does Agile or Scrum. So anything you're using today comes from Deming. Yep. Do yourself a favor, read Deming's original work. It'll do you a ton of good, and you're likely to be able to set up a process improvement program in your company that's really simple to run. Yeah, it is. My, my favorite uh, that he wrote is called Out of the Crisis. Yes. Uh, the details out the 14 points, details out yes. the whole, whole process. He was a statistician, as you know, very, very analytical. Uh, and, and so everything he lays out is very, very specific and very, very process oriented. So those are, Josh, those are three examples of 12 uh, that, that are all go back to how really to create 
and set up a, a system and a process in any organization for world-class customer service. We designed this to be highly entertaining and fun and hard hitting at the same time so that it would engage an entire team in the process so everybody can read it and they'll get engaged. Uh, it's fun. And then every chapter has what we call a get peddling section, which is how to apply <laughs> the principles in your organization, right? So you can uh, implement those principles. I have used these principles over and over and over in my business career. Uh, they, it all goes back to those simple truths that make things happen. Yeah. I just want to tell you one story on process improvement which when I owned my food service and vending company, it was pretty amazing. Um, when we first started in business, we used to let our route drivers, the guys who filled the vending machines, go shopping for what they put in the snack machines. We had 110 items in our warehouse because we felt our customers needed variety. Well, one of our customers happened to be a very large grocery chain. And he used to give me a lot of hard time about running out of the popular stuff all the time. So we got this, and it, it, this was iteration after iteration after iteration after iteration. We went from 110 down to 80, down to 60, down to 40, finally down to 20 items that were in our warehouse, and eight were required to be in the machines at all times. And we ended up making a guarantee to our customers that we would never run out of Snickers, plain chips, M&Ms, or Doritos. And if we did, you would get a free day of coffee on us. Wow. Now, what the result of this was is our average service per stop, which is how much merchandise somebody put into a machine and how much money they took out, went from about $45 a service to $148 a service. Wow, a triple, more than triple. Now, that was all because we used Deming's process. We measured, we iterated, we measured again, we iterated, not all of our ideas worked, but enough worked where over a period of three years, we went from $45 a service to $148 a service. So if you folks listening don't think this stuff works, I can promise you you're wrong, it does. 100%. So, so Stephen, unfortunately we are out of time. I'd love to hear about all 12 of them and maybe we'll have you back to do some more. But how do folks find you and how do they get your book? And uh, would you be willing to talk to people if they would like to? A hundred percent, Josh. So easiest place, uh, you can go to my website, stephenjanderson.com, Stephen with a V. So S-T-E-V-E-N, the letter J, uh, Anderson, A-N-D-E-R-S-O-N.com. There are a few Steve Andersons in the world, Josh. So that's why the J's in yeah, there. I'm really surprised. I'm really surprised. <laughs> <laughs> so even janderson.com it's there on the website. Uh, and it is available and it will be available in every format, audio, print, digital. Uh, you can, whatever your learning preference is, uh, very easily accessible. And uh, contact, uh, you can contact me through that website as well. So on social media, uh, as well as email me. Uh, we work with businesses all over the country to create a where people mean everything customer service environment. And that's what it's all about. People mean everything. Cool. And I've got two things I would like you to do. In fact, you've been listening to this podcast for the last 10 weeks or so. You already know what's coming. So the first thing is, wherever you're listening to this podcast, please go and give us an honest rating and review. And I mean honest. If you love us, you give us five stars or four stars. If you think we're mediocre, give us three stars. If you hate us, you give us one. And I won't cry too much if you give us one, but please give us an honest re rating. <laughs> review. The second thing is I recently completed my second book and I finally got out in the world. It's called The Sale Ready Company. Uh, it's another business parable. Our Aardvark family now has John getting ready to think about retiring or moving on to the next stage in his life. And there's all sorts of issues that come up around that. And it's a lot of fun to read. Even people who aren't in business tell me, I want to know what happens next. And you may too. So to get the book is really easy. You just go to salereadycompany.com. At saleReadyCompany.com. I'm selling the book there for half price for $7.95, and you get a whole bunch of free bonuses with it. So, this is Josh Patrick. You're with Steven Anderson. We're at Cracking the Cash Flow Code. Thanks a lot for stopping by. 
I hope to see you back here really soon.